Hello, this is Chuck James from 3C Production Studios in Bowie, Maryland. Today I'm going to do a tutorial on V-Vocal, which is one of the tools inside of Sonar. I'm going to be using Sonar X1 Producers Expanded for this tutorial. I really like the V-Vocal. It has a lot of the pitch correction um, tools that are in the real popular pitch correction software, but because it's integrated inside of Sonar, it makes it easy with your workflow and you don't have to go to different screens that are unrelated. So uh, let's get started with the tutorial. I'll give you a warning up front. I'm not a professional singer. I just laid this track over an Earth, Wind and Fire song just so that you can see in the tutorial as I go along. Let's take a listen to how it sounded before the V vocal. To trust God in what I hear, everything, all I see, well, that was the first time I opened my eyes. The first thing I like to do with the V vocal is to select the segment that you're going to be editing. If you have a real long vocal track, it's usually a lot easier to split it into smaller clips. That way you don't tax your um, computer so much. And then once you highlight it, just hit Shift V on your keyboard and it'll bring up the V vocal palette. As the V vocal palette boots up, you'll see something going on down here. It's actually encoding the uh, audio and it's giving you the pitch. So I'll come over here to the zoom tool, take a small section and zoom in so that you have a good area to see the notes that are played, what pitch they're in, and also so that you can see the wave so that you could see the phrasing and things like that. It'll be really important when we go to some of the other screens. The um, pitch correction can be done either manually or automatic. Usually what I'll do is set it up to where it's not real obtrusive and then go back and make adjustments manually. You'll see down here they have a scale range. You can push scale and then pick the note for the scale that you're in. And the V vocal will not allow the singer to pick any notes that aren't on the scale. You can go to major scale or minor scale. Usually I like to turn the scale off because it'll give the singer a lot more flexibility in what they want to do. Now over here you have note. This is your note sense. I'll turn the note sense up to 90% where it won't pull everything exactly on the note. But it'll usually sound a lot more um, natural that way. Then with the vibrato, what I'll usually do is turn the vibrato up to about uh, 50%. I have a lot of vibrato in my voice, so I'll use the program to correct some of that as it processes. And then I'll usually leave the synths at about 30. And then you can hit the correct key. And you can see that now where you only had yellow before, you have red and yellow. The yellow is where it moved the pitch to and the red is where it was originally. So then we'll come back here and set our cursor and take a listen to it now that the pitch has been corrected by V vocal automatically. To trust God in what I hear everything all I see. Well, there was a Now to my ear that sounds better than it did. We can switch it on and off. One of the nice things about V vocal is that it has um, undo and redo so if you make mistakes you could just hit the undo and it'll take it right back to where it was originally so I'll let you hear the before and the after to trust God in what I hear and rethink all I see To trust God in what I hear and rethink all I see, well... Now again, the pitch correction that it made I think was pretty good choices. But I'll show you some of the things that you can do manually. If you look at the opening section, over here to the right hand side, it allows you to move the, um, the pitch screen over top of the audio. On this section, you can see that it made a big correction. If you hold the cursor over the line, you'll see where it moved it to. You can see that it says E4, 64, and then it says plus 29. 
That means that it's not exactly on the E, but it sounds natural. But what I'll do for this tutorial is pull it down to where it says that it's directly on the E. And then we'll play it again and see how it sounds to your ear. Let's go, to what I hear it. Let's go back a little further. To trust God in what I hear and rethink all I see. Now, to me, it sounded a little flat. So we're going to undo that. And let's see what happens if we take it up to the next note. And we take it all the way up to the F sharp. To trust God in what I hear and rethink all I see. Now, to me, that sounded a little bit better, so we're going to leave it there at the F sharp. Now, a lot of times when you do corrections, you can see at the beginning of the waveform or in here where you have really big swings. This will show up on the meter. And this meter will turn green, yellow, or red depending on how much processing it does. As it goes into the yellow, it'll be more audible. And when it gets into the red, then it'll really sound distorted. So let's look and see how much of a change it is. So we'll take a look at the meter as we play it. To trust God in what I hear and rethink all I see. Now, for the most part, it was in the green, but it was a part at the end that it went into the uh, red a little bit, and you could hear the audible distortion. So, what you can do when you get that distortion is highlight the area that distorted. And then come over and take your eraser tool. If you tap in the eraser tool, it'll put it back to the original waveform and it'll get rid of some of that distortion. So let's take a listen to it now. So that was good. It got rid of the artifacts that I heard earlier. So that's some of the things you can do. The other thing is they have what you call a draw tool. And the pencil, the curve tool, what it allows you to do is where you have areas where you think you might get a distortion, you could either erase it or you could come in with this curve tool and draw a line that's going to be a little bit smoother so it'll cut out some of the, the fluctuations in the pitch. You can see that as I just drew it there, it smoothed that out and it'll make it sound a little more natural. So those are some of the things you could do with the pitch correction. The other thing that I really like about the um, the V vocal is that they have a LFO tool and this is used to change the vibrato in a section if you look at this phrasing in here you can see that it's a lot of vibrato so if you take the LFO tool and put it on the line when it turns into two blinking arrows you can hit your cursor and then as you pull down it will get rid of some of the vibrato or you can push your cursor up and make it really extreme. So I'll just let you hear it just to see what the effect did. To trust God in what I okay. I will undo that. Now we'll go to one of the other tools that I really like in V-Vocal. And it's the Dynamics tool. When you click the Dynamics tool, what you get is a straight line through the center, which is at Unity Gain. And it'll allow you to do your envelopes for volume right here in the V vocal. So if you have certain sections that are too loud or too soft, you can go in here and highlight those sections. And then either bring them up or down. Go back to the cursor tool. And as you bring it up, you can see that the waveform is actually changing to reflect that volume. Now I really like that feature because now not only can you hear the difference you can kind of see the difference and try to match the body of the waveforms going through. So I'll let you hear how that sound. To trust God in what I hear and rethink all I see. Now you'll also notice that there's some uh, breath noise in there. And so a lot of producers like the breath, breath noise. We're going to leave that like it is. You can see some of this breath noise. One of the nice things about this dynamics is you can go in and highlight the breath and just bring it down a few dB so it's, it's not so loud in the track. Now let's listen to it again. To trust God in what I hear and rethink all I see. Well, 
All right. So that's what you can do with the dynamics. And the way I usually use it is like a gate. Since you can do it so quickly, I'll just highlight areas where there's no vocal and just drop it out. This will save some of your processing power in the program that you're using. And it'll make your vocal sound a lot cleaner. Now you can hear the entire piece with all of the noise taken out. To trust God in what I hear and rethink all I see. Well. Okay, I got a little aggressive on one of the starts. We'll have to go back and back off on that a little bit. You just highlight it. Hit it with the eraser tool. And then get your cursor and redo it. Like so. Now the other things that you can do is a format. And the format is basically the things that lets you know in a voice whether you can, you're listening to a male vocal or a female vocal. I'll give you an example. I'll put it really extreme to the high end. To trust God in what I hear. And you can see how it changed the vocal. And I'll put it extreme on the low end. To trust God in what I hear. Now... If you want to put it back to the default, you can hit undo, or you could hit it with the eraser tool. For my vocals, since my voice is pretty high, I usually will come in and hit it with like minus two. That'll give it a little more chesty sound. To trust God in what I hear and rethink all I see. Well, okay. And then the final thing is the time. Now this is a really good feature, especially if you're doing vocals, like in a rap, where you're going to double the vocals, or R&B, where you're going to have the singer sing over their own vocals to give it that fullness. If you don't like the timing, you can change the timing of the um, piece. Let's listen to a piece that maybe will want to change the timing a little. To trust God in what I hear and rethink all I see, well... Okay, where that well is, let's say that we wanted to move that a little closer. First thing you do is go up to the line and hit an anchor point. And that'll mean that nothing on this side of the line will move. And then you go back here and you put an anchor point so that nothing behind it will move. Then you go to the start of where you want that to, to move to and you just drag it ahead. And you'll hear the difference in the vocal now that I've changed that timing. Everything all I see, well, that was the first time I opened my eyes. Okay, and now I'll let you hear how it sounds with it back to the original. Everything all I see, well. So that's a really quick tutorial on... Um, V vocal. I hope you enjoyed it. This is Chuck James and be looking out for other tutorials that I have on Sonar coming soon. Thanks.